Come on, baby. The off-season mind. The grind for your mind, too, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Cowboys versus Cowboys applying pressure. This season seems bleak. Let's get it one way or another. Come on. Mama said there'll be days just like this. Come on. Read it. Run from it. That's the year run. Stand to your feet, baby. Yeah. Ain't no party like a cowboy party. Let's go. Let's get it. Hey, yo. Come on. Come on. Goodness, baby. You have a natural allegiance to me. Are you not entertained? Ain't no party like a cowboy party. What about a law nation? Rule. Come on, baby. Party like a cowboy party. Come on. <laughs> What's good with y'all, man? Shout out to you. Uh, Anthony, appreciate you. Elijah, you know, you know, appreciate Elijah. <laughs> appreciate him. And uh, shout out to Cowboys Hater. Appreciate you. Uh, Danny, appreciate you, man. And uh, who else we got here? Uh, Brown, get down. Appreciate you. Alpha Mason, 8406 in the mix. Uh, Peace, hey, appreciate you so much for jumping in and tuning in. Give me a one if the audio is straight. Give me a one if uh, we are straight. Give me a one if we are straight. All right, and uh, pull a string and I wink at you. I'm your puppet. <laughs> Come on, baby. I'm your puppet, baby. Come on. All right, Jordan, hey, appreciate you, man. Shout out to everybody for tuning in. If this is your first time ever tuning in to the nation, I always say you got to be in control of your own destination for the nation, right? Got to be in control. And speaking of control, there's an odor in the house that we got to maintain. It. Absolutely. Keep things going. And shout out to all sponsors before we get going. God, no. Ain't nobody mad but the devil, man. God, no. All right, so the audio cuts in and out. I might have to figure this out. All right, so the audio did play almost, but okay. Hmm. It went out again. Okay. Let me see how I can fix this. Y'all bear with me one way or another, man. Appreciate y'all for your patience. Talking about being ready. The audio must be musty. <laughs> I feel y'all. All right, let's go one more time, and One more time for your mind. Hey, don't y'all ever give up. They say, hey, if you fall, try to land on your back because if you if you can look up, you can get up, man. That's just what it is. Come on, baby. We're going to try to get this going so we can get this party going, baby. That, that, that is the law, baby. So y'all understand that, man. That is the law of the nation, baby. All right, one more time. One more time, we're going to get it. You know, we're going to get this thing going. Ain't nobody mad but the haters. Come Let's on. Let's talk about control. And first and foremost, I'm talking about 
control body odor and that's anywhere and all you have to do is shop dot mando and get five dollars off of your starter pack and that's over 40 percent with promo code l a w shop mando.com let's go and i personally this is my routine i use this body wash odor control yes indeed full body control with mando they have the product here and they also have deodorant that you apply under the arm for 72 hours hours of odor control you want to be in control and speaking of control they also have the product that you can apply all over the body the invisible cream and it also fights for 72 hour look it's all about being in control and with mando man they control body odor anywhere all you have to do is shop dot mando get five dollars off your starter pack that's over 40 percent with promo code all right. Appreciate it, y'all, man. Hey, <laughs> thank y'all so much for your love and adulation. Now we can get this party on. Uh, hey, man, though, I'm going to do another one for y'all on another day, though. Appreciate all of you guys. Okay, so it is what it is. Hey, we, we did our homework assignment, so you guys do the other half of it. Jump on into the description box and do me a huge favor. Purchase that because I promise you, man, it will knock out the odor. As you can tell, it can also knock out the audio. So that's how powerful this product is baby let's go man let's get it one way or another we got to talk about c dangerous lamb he is uh, allegedly might hold out for voluntary workouts and it start next week now is this something where we got to pull the trigger and smash glass and say hey man this is the cowboys this is what we're going to do for the 2024 season it seems bleak right now but i'm gonna tell you guys that this is the pathway that you got to go through in the National Football League. It's always these millionaires versus these billionaires. Billionaires figure out a way to make it seem as if, though, that these players are selfish and they will have the upper hand. They would make you feel like, hey, you will be on the billionaire side. You would literally say, hey, man, Jerry, John Stephen Jones. Hey, man, we agree. CD is selfish, man. He need to be out there. He need to be getting on these routes, man. He need to be out here working to improve himself to win the, the championship. He need to be out here, man. He need to stop, he need to stop dropping the ball. He need to uh, uh, get better. He trash, law. Hey, he suck, man. Don't pay that, man. Put him on the trade blocks, etc. And there will be people that will lean on the Jones family philosophy. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, even the great Aaron Donald had to sit out for his money, right? Let me know if I'm lying. Even Nick Bosa had to sit out or held out for his coins, right? Uh, my, my guy that plays for this team, Zach Martin. Don't even put the T in that man's name. I'm country. Zach Martin had to sit out and say to himself, hey, you got to pay me, me. Mama needs shoes. I can't afford to feed my family, basically. You're going to have to pay me up. Nah, 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 nah. I done took the less money to stay here. You're going to have the time. To, it's time for you to give me the money now. No, 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 no. So that's how this stuff goes, ladies and gentlemen. But what I don't want you guys to do is all of a sudden sully and denigrate my guy, C. Dan C Dangerous Lamb. Shout out to my guy. Uh, the lunatic for, for coining that phrase there. So what I want to say here, ladies and gentlemen, is that when we start to look upon the, the numbers that he was able to present and exude here with the Dallas Cowboys, I'm telling you right now, I get it. I understand that most of us can say it's business and business is business. But at the end of the day, the reality of it is that there's been no 88 that, that put up the kinds of caliber of numbers that he was able to exhibit and exude out there on the field. And we all know that, hey, there's a long history of the 88 Drew Pearsons, by the way, Michael, the playmaker, Irvin, come on. Let me crack your cranium and <laughs> fertilize your brain. <laughs> There's Bryant, you know, Antonio Bryant to a degree, too. You know, uh, there's been guys that rock 88 that we can sit back and say, hey, hey, CD is doing something here. Now, granted, out of all of the 88s, you can look at it from this perspective. 
you got to say it with this particular mindset is that CD, he normally, he don't just line up at the X spot. He's a little different, you know. You can line him up anywhere, inside, outside, but primarily he get busy inside. And, of course, a lot of people look at those spots on the field as, hey, you know, hey, the two-way goes, hey, but we looking for that dominant, bigger factor, X factor, like a Dez Bryant was for the organization for many of moons. And on top of that, when you really quantify what the playmaker was doing. Let me crack your cranium and <laughs> fertilize your brain. Both of those boys. And if you're old enough to see Drew play, you know, let me know in the chat. And he was a smaller, frailer wide receiver but he played with heart you know he didn't drop a lot of them you know the famous playmaker playmaking that he made was the Hail Mary can you imagine if he had parquets as hands that play wouldn't be uh, put out there as a legacy play right the Hail Mary catch and he fought like hell to get into the Hall of Fame but let me know put 88 in the chat if you've seen all of those 88s play, you know, if you've seen Drew Pearson, if you got a chance to see the playmaker, Michael Irvin, and if you got a chance to see Dez Bride as well as CD, put 88s in the chat, man. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You keep the engagement up. Appreciate you guys. Ty Man says, appreciate you. Go, go Cowboys. I'm seeing more Texans fans in the chat. Nah, Eastside, you know, you know, hey. Start your content page, man. You catch up, man. Shoot, you you have a lot of people following you, man. Uh huh. Little D, little D says he saw all of the eighty eights. Travis Moore, we got all of the eighty eights in here. Yeah, my first Mike, my first was Mike. I'm only thirty seven. This is Adam. I feel you. Yeah, uh, I think that out of all of the eighty eights, we can all say that this dude. Let me crack your cranium and. Fertilizer. <laughs> He'd probably be the favorite 88 out of them, you know. Shoo. If you rank the 88, it, it, you probably put Michael Irvin and then Dez, then Drew, and then CD. Then CD might pass Drew and all of this stuff, but not to rank those boys. But, shoot, I, I like the other 88. I like the Antonio Bryant 88, too. You know, it's just that he came into the mix at the wrong time, boy. Yes, indeed. I seen all of them, Cliff. I appreciate you. Um, but when we start looking at, you know, 3,473 yards, receiving yards in his first 50 games, he's on top of that list. Of course, we are in a more pass-happy league. We are in a league that throws the ball all around. But this is what I got to say to you guys. Stop using that as a discount because people will will say well we're in a more pass happy league when it's only to the cowboys right so when peyton manning was breaking all of the records that that happened in the 90s and the 80s it was cool for him to do it right and then it when it went to the peyton manning era to the next era now it wasn't it's not cool for these players to make to break peyton manning's records right or Tom Brady records, right? But it was cool. It was cool when Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and all of those boys, Drew, Drew Brees, and all of those guys were breaking all of those guys in the 90s and the 80s. In the 90s and the 80s, it was a different kind of caliber in 2000s and 2010, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Tony Hill as well. Uh, so I will say this. Stop Stop shanking your whole team. It's always Cowboys versus Cowboys, but it is what it is. The The original 88 was no joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was no joke at all. So when we look at CDs, 122 receptions, most catches in the single season in franchise history, meaning that there's no other 88 to wear 88 to do what he just did right this past season and I, I i get it i understand the 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 whole talk track of what these guys are going to talk about here and and we're going to play some audio uh from 105.3 to fan but before we get f things further listen to what my guy had to say y'all can't hear audio huh Man, couldn't hear it. You could read it. You know, it, it was playing. It, uh, <laughs> the language was on the screen there. Uh, and, and apologies for the low audio there, by the way. I, I know I know y'all can hear it because some people hear it, some people can't. 
some put it on the other ear, you know. But but the reality of it, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Dallas Cowboys, when we go through these processes here, the we always going back and forth over this versus that, that versus this. The Cowboys got to understand that we got us a phenomenal guy. We do. We got us a phenomenal guy that really can take this skill set for what we're looking at to this level. If they just listen, now is not the time to fight. Now is not the time to break up. When we pull up these guys on the screen right here, this is the ultimate time to build around, not to take away. It is the ultimate time for the Cowboys to put pieces around Michael Parsons. It's the ultimate time to pull and put pieces around C.D. Lamb. What the Cowboys tend to do is that they get butt hurt about losing in the playoff game and thinking that it's time to tear down. You don't have to tear this whole entire thing down. What you have to do is understand that you can put pieces around C.D. Lamb, put pieces around Parsons, and on top of that, you can also, you can also put pieces, and I know people are going to say, well, law, they put pieces around Dak Prescott. Well, at this time, Regardless of whether or not you like him, hate him, despise him, want him gone, you still got to play through this process of the 2024 season. And whoever you put in at quarterback for that particular year is going to require you to put pieces around wide receiver for one and put pieces around the defensive player. They did it for Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald by him by himself couldn't win a Super Bowl by himself. Oh, Matthew Stafford, when he went to the Rams by himself, he wouldn't have been able to win a Super Bowl. It takes a complete team, T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieves more. And that's been the issue, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a one if the audio is straight because y'all saying that even my audio is low. Is, is it low or y'all catfishing? Let, let me know. Uh, Cowboy Nation. The Dallas Cowboys, if you can understand that that's how the process in the system is built and that's how it's supposed to be. Yes. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys themselves got to understand that. And that's one of the problems that they've been been hit with is the ability to build the team without emotions putting into the places of those things. Uh, it was no problem when we go all the way back to the Jimmy Johnson era for him to say to his better players, to his better players, is that, hey, if you don't do X, Y, and Z things, I will replace you. I will get rid of you. I will do X, Y, and Z things if you don't get these things done. And that's one of the things that the Cowboys have been missing is the state of accountability. It's the state of, hey, I can't, I can't put you in a room where everything is given to you out of comfort. There need to be a room where everything is not given to you out of comfort, meaning that, hey, if you mess up on a play, I'm not finna pat you on your back. I'm finna scald you. I'm finna break you down. I'm finna belittle you on the field, but not in the media. And those been the problems with the Dallas Cowboys. It's been too comfy for comfort on both ends of it. One being from how the media kind of hold the hands of Jerry Jones and two being in the kind of caliber of how the players never get ridiculed. Like, 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 for example, in that Green Bay Packers game that we all witnessed in that game, when, when did we ever see the coach on the sideline spitting upon the players, letting them know, snap out of it. This is what our blood, sweat, and tears all offseason was about. Right. But what happens, what tend to happen here is that the only people that y'all get a little, a little. Um, let me see how I can put this in better terms. A little animated is me over here. I'm sitting here in the confines of my of my studio at the crib. And y'all saying that he's got more passion than the people on the sideline. Right. There should be somebody 
And that's what, when you look back at the 80s or the 90s or even the 70s, there were always somebody on the sideline. Let me crack your cranium and <laughs> fertilize your brain. Yeah, yeah, when we were winning. <laughs> so we need that. And even when we seen C.D. Lab get pushed in the back in that playoff game, we shouldn't be so emotional to use that as a reason to say, hey, let's walk away from this. Let's walk away from, uh, let me pull this up. Let's walk away from these things. Let, let, let's let say that, hey, what we seen out there were just only fools go. Let's walk away from 3,473 yards. Let's walk away from 122 receptions in a single year. Let's walk away from all of that because we can't get it done. No. That's not when you're supposed to walk away. That's when you go right to the source and say, hey, get your stuff together. But what the Cowboys tend to do is break everything down. I I remember one of the greatest basketball, one of the greatest basketball of all time, players of all time, Michael Jordan. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. How many rings do he have without Pippen, ladies and gentlemen? How many rings do he have without Phil Jackson? How many times that he made it to the playoff and got beat down? How many years did it took him to get to there, to that point, even though you were able to identify that he had talent, he had the skill sets, he was unbelievable as a person on the the court. All right, so basically, let me uh, say this, so, so for clarity. All right, so you always want to pay your mortgage first. The Cowboys are looking at this, and they, they may go by their own way, their own way, meaning that they will look into this whole contract situation and, and say, okay, well, we can look at C.D. Lamb's contract. We can look at Parsons. Really, when you look at everything, you can literally wait on Parsons. The only problem is with all three of these contracts, the longer you wait, the more you're going to pay if you keep. So if you look at Parsons contract to a degree, whereas you can say, well, I don't want to pay him both some money, but you're going to get in the range of in between TJ Watts and Bosa. I get all of that. But if Parsons fool around and give you 13 to 14 sacks this season, then you're going to look at that. You got to also just count that up, right? But you still have the fifth-year option with him, so you got longer ways to work that contract out. The other thing of it is with C.D., he's already on his fifth-year option. Meaning that if you you can tear up that option right now and put that money into a contract, which will give you more and more opportunities to go out there and get people. Well, that's a mute point because at this point, all of the kinds of quality of free agent guys, the premium stuff is already gone. So what you can look at now is say, okay, salvage that. Let me just see what he can do for this season and still pay the brother. But what he's saying is that he literally... I'm thinking that from his camp, they are saying, look, you don't want to just play on a $16, $17 million deal. You want to play for the future. What happens if you go out there and twist a knee? What happens if you go out there and and damage your elbows, your limbs, or what have you? Then that will be less money for you on your second contract, and then you have to go into this mindset of prove-it deal. So what he's saying, ultimately, let me sit back and wait. If these guys are not willing to pay, the, the, whole, the whole thing is, is this right here, ladies and gentlemen. Granted, granted, the Trayvon Diggs deal, it was a benefit for both sides, basically. The Trayvon Diggs took a little less money than what he could have received. Yeah, yeah. But when did Trayvon Diggs get hurt? It was during practice. We talking about practice, man. Not a game. Practice. So the agent for C.D. Lamb is saying, I don't want you to go out there. I don't give a dog if it's voluntary, involuntary, hey, uh, missionary. We don't want you out there. 
<laughs> we don't need you out there, bro. Because at the end of the day, you can twist something. You can break something. And they they will pay you then. They will definitely pay you then because they pay their hurt guys, you know. So it is what it is. Um, let's everybody go. Let everybody go. All right. <clears throat> let's get it. We're gonna open up uh, the phone lines, and this is what it is. I don't, I don't do the uh, the solely clip stuff. I don't do none of that stuff. You know, it is what it is. You know, we we y- y'all can go out there and look at the sky and the sun, the moon, and all of the portals and stuff that's opening up to snatch your soul and send it through to another galaxy. All that stuff, y'all can do all of that. You know, y'all y'all go do the eclipse. Go 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 do that. It remind me of a a, a movie. Uh, we call it Independence Day. <laughs> Everybody went on top of their roof. They were looking up. Oh, the aliens are coming down. Hey, hello. Hello, we here. Come on, grab me. <laughs> that probably will happen to my audio. It's messing up everything. <laughs> well, there's herds of people doing something for the first day. There's too many erratic folks out there, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too many people want to make news and stuff. You know, I look, I said, nah. Hey, stop, thief. Come back, thief. Nah, 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 nah. Thanos is coming. Yeah, yeah. All the people looking up, you know, and the herds of people looking up at the sky shooters. Too. That, that, that son been out there for billions of years, man. No, no, I ain't finna. Law, let's go out there and look up into the sky. I look, I, I'm a sun gazer myself, you know. But I'm going to let the Lord do his work, and I'm going to sit over here. Y'all go and tell me what happened, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's like, come on, you going to go to the rave party? Nah, dog, I'm good, you know. I ain't finna go this time around. But, yeah, I already know. I walk on the earth with my shoes off. You know, I already talk to my trees that's outside. I rub, I sit behind my trees, I sit next to my trees and get all of that good energy and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 I drink my water. Hey, I got a machine right here to turn water into doggone hydrogen water. I got all of that stuff over here. Yeah, yeah. Don't look up, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and somebody going to be like, nah, nah, I'm okay, man. Nobody. Sonic Boom. <laughs> does it better. They can come closer than close. Yeah. <laughs> Original, they never will be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Locust is coming out of the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Low key, you know, low key, he's coming or locusts. is. <laughs> they appreciate everybody, man. But yeah, y'all do that. Uh, tell me what y'all seen. Did y'all see the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl when you look up into this eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, low. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Speaking and of that, close, have me thinking they friends. Ten toes down. Shout out to South Carolina. Oh, well, y'all let me down. But shout out to South Carolina. They did their thing, man. Um, Clark let me down. I, I wanted I thought she was gonna bust some uh, some some good numbers up, but she didn't do that for me. She definitely didn't do that for me this time around. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I want to give a shout out to Prize Picks. Prize Picks, you're in the mix. They have a feature called Flex Friday. So even if your picks don't hit, you can flex them. Ain't nothing wrong with flexing, you know. So my picks didn't hit, but I flexed them. And we were still able to get out on top with a plus 120, $120. So I appreciate Prize Picks. Be sure to do the same. Download Prize Picks. 100% of your deposit match up to $100 will be on the line for your mind. Appreciate Prize Picks. And let's jump around to the phone line. The hotline for your mind will be 657-390-7391. Who's going to be the first caller of the day? I hope the audio is straight, though. Everything's been kind of cast away. And we ain't talking about the movie and Wilson. Gamecocks did go cr- Look, South Carolina, there's some ballers in South Carolina. I, hey, they were balling, balling. I said, man, look, she got undefeated, man. They don't know how to lose. <laughs> I wonder how that feel. You go all through the season undefeated. 
You go through the whole entire season undefeated. That's crazy. Uh, go UConn. Appreciate you. Uh, <clears throat> Roger says, Law, you defend so many times. Def- <laughs> he says, Law, you spend too much time defending Dak. His performance against good teams in the playoff speaks for itself. Love your show. All I can say is, Roger, and I get what you're saying. On offense, name me one other person who showed up in the playoff in the last three or four years. I'll wait. Just, just name me the people that showed up. Just name Roger. Just name me the people that showed up. But when we go into the 70s or we go into the 90s, name me the people that showed up in the playoffs. Name me all of the people that showed in the playoffs. It wasn't just Troy. It wasn't just Emmett. And if a dog sure wasn't just Playmaker. So all of a sudden, the Cowboys in the playoffs – Going back and li- listening into to, to these things, it's just it just Dak that got to show up. What happened to C.D. Lamb? I'm I'm defending C.D. Lamb, and I'm telling you, he didn't show up. He didn't show up. I'm trying to find a time when Zeke showed up. Zeke not even here no more, right? He didn't show up. Tony Pollard, did he show up against Green Bay? I just need to know who showed up in this Green Bay Packers game, right? I just need to know Jake Ferguson, for what it was worth, he gave us something, but nobody else, nobody. So the Cowboys, when we get to the playoffs, we need a team. We can literally, we can literally look back at this and say we need a team. But at the end of the day, we can go back and forward and, and we can point the finger and say, okay, it's just Dak. So we get rid of Dak, all of a sudden these other guys going to show up? Is that the case? Then, let hey, I'm all down. Let's get rid of them. You know, I've never been the person to say, hey, I'm one million percent all in. Let's go. Let's go, Dak. Let's, let's win the game behind Dak. I've been on record, even me and Boss Cowboy Sports, we talked back and forth. He was saying that Dak is elite. I was saying that Dak Prescott, he's above. He's above average, yes, and he's great, but he ain't elite yet. No, let's not crown him. And that's been going on for nine seasons. Have I been wrong with that statement? No. Have I been right with that statement? No. But you still need weapons around them so what people try to do is they will look at Dak Prescott and they will say to themselves okay he can win it all by himself because somebody over here in Cowboys land said so no he got to have weapons just like Joshua Allen he needed weapons oh excuse me who else need weapons Lamar he's still in the same tier of those boys because those guys haven't proved that they can win it by themselves. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and uh, Deshaun Watson. Who else? Y'all can name name a name. There's only one or two guys that you can literally say that, hey, man, this guy can do it. And that's what? Pat Mahomes, maybe. But you still got to quantify that you have Andy Reid. I would love I would love to see what Aaron Rodgers would have looked like with Andy Reid. I would love to see Dak what he looked like with Andy Reid. But there's only one Andy Reid. Andy Reid was so good, he made Donovan McNabb look good. Let me know if I'm lying. Y'all seen what Donovan McNabb looked like without Andy Reid? Come on, man. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, uh, CJ uh, Eastside says CJ Harold 2.0. Well, I'm going to tell you this, though. He, he, he better get it done this season. If not, then I'm going I'm to be looking at CJ because now teams know the kind of caliber of throws he likes to throw, and they're looking at all of the tape, and he's not playing at a last-place schedule that he's going to be playing at. He's going to be playing some first-place schedule. What, 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 what Texans finish first or second place? He's going to have some heat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and let a few ball, let a few balls go over Stefan Diggs' head. Okay, all right, <laughs> it's a good honeymoon now. But what what I'm gonna say things about the Texans is that they're doing a great job on surrounding that defensive side of the corn because at the end of the day, Daniel Hunter, to me personally, to me personally. I think that Daniil Hunter was a bigger signing than a Stephon Diggs, in my opinion, because defense win championships. Defense win championships. 
So when you think of it that way, you can literally say, hey, they got a Daniel Hunter. They got a Will Anderson. They got a linebackers. They got pieces around there that that's going to help out that defensive side of the coin. So that's going to be good for them. Um, <clears throat> Byron Brown says Pollard wasn't 100% plus the O-line was health, wasn't healthy either. I'll put the wasn't in there for you. And you're right. You're right. In 2022, if we had any chance of opportunity to win that particular playoff game, what people fail to realize and don't point out is that you had a pilot to go down. Not just that on the offensive line, and I get it. People are going to say that those excuses, but when Terrence Steele went down, that's a third of your offense there. You had such a porous offensive line that you couldn't even get get or scrape a yard in 2022. So everything was on the quarterback. Yeah, I get all of that. And he threw two INTs, which was very, 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 very much so. Very much so. Terrible. So what other quarterback that would have been performing in that particular environment? Good. No, I don't think anybody would have performed against the 49ers in that environment. You had a kicker who couldn't hit water if he fell off a boat. Who remember that in 2022? But people don't quantify those type of things. They just look at it and say, well, hey, it's the quarterback. The phone line, the hotline for your mind is 657-390-7391 is the hotline. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Facts are never excuses. Yeah. So so what you got to do is when, you, when you're delivering a team that's built off of facts, you got to say to yourself, I would not win if I don't do this. That's what the Texans did. They said to themselves, they were able to catch the Browns by surprise. And they said to themselves, we got blown. They got the doors blown off of them by the Ravens. Why? Because they was a one dimensional team. They shut down the run. Just look, whoever just know football and understand football, they were not able to move the ball. They had a good offensive line. They had a good rookie quarterback. They had some pieces out there that was able to get separations or what have you on the wide receivers aspect of it. But those DBs, Ravens DB did just like this. They set on every route. And they said, okay, CJ, if you going to win this game, you going to have to either run it yourself or throw it into cloud coverages and let me know what's his QBR in that game. Because they couldn't run the ball. They said, you know what, we're not going to blitz CJ. We're going to sit on routes. And CJ looked pedestrian. So what did they do this offseason for those who understand and know football? What did the, the Texans do? <sighs> What did the Texans do? They went and got run game. And so when it goes into the next season, people won't sit back and say, hey, man, you know, this quarterback is trash. He can't beat cloud cover defenses. He can't beat this and that. They went and got, they get, went and got a run game. Now, would that be sufficient enough? No. If I'm the Texans, I'm still drafting me a running back. That's what I'm doing. Sure. Uh, Joe Mixon, hey, we like you. <laughs> we like what you bring to the table. But that's still not enough. They still going to have to go get a running back. So the Cowboys, yes, we got our doors blown clean off by the Green Bay Packers. There's no if, ends, and buts about that. The Packers whooped the brakes off of us. They beat us so bad that they got everybody in shambles. Jerry Jones is looking at it saying, hey, I'm going all in by saying that all of these coaching staff is on one-year contracts. <laughs> That's just how it goes. But neither here nor there. Um, nobody want to call in today. Y'all out watching the Eclipse. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Be sure to hit the like, share this content, let a friend or a neighbor know where to go when it's time to tune in to Cowboy Sports Talk and Beyond. That's been my time. We out. Peace. <laughs>